Live Kickoff. Starting lineups for the Mustangs in goal number 18, Martin Dominguez. Number two, Brock Pope from Corinth, Texas. Number three, Owen Zonick, a junior defender. At number six, Alex Salvo, midfielder from Madrid, Spain. Number seven, Kieran Pino, Frankfurt, Germany native. Number 10, Bailey Sparks from Plano, Texas. And number 12, Lamar Bynum, a senior from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And number 17, Jalen Mitchell, a sophomore midfielder. And number 19, Milton Lopez from Irving, Texas. So forward. Number 20, Nikola Djordjevic from Austin, Texas. Number 21, Daniel Ascorsia, a junior midfielder. And they are coached by head coach Kevin Hudson. All right, across opportunity. For the Golden Bears, in goal, number one, Mark Broger. Number two, Kevin Carmichael in the defense. Number three, Giancarlo Mota, a sophomore defender. Number seven, Justin Knighton from, Corinth, from Torrance, California. Number 10, Nanso Adimabua, 6'4 forward. Number 11, Kieran Bracken Sierra from Berkeley, California. Number 15, Adrian Guzman in the midfield. Uh, number 19, Alfredo Ortiz from Los Angeles, California, 5'5", five, five junior. Number 27, Malcolm Zelizet, six foot forward. Number 29, Santiago Hopkins, a senior from West Hills, California. Number 33, Bo Morrison, 6'1", forward. Golden Bears are coached by head coach Leonard Griffin. Santiago, we're we're, uh, Fernando, we're excited about this early start here. We have about three minutes in and an uh, early free kick. Um, early moments, your thoughts initially here? Very physical from the get-go. Uh, we see Cal putting pressure up top with Malcolm getting physical. Right now we saw the, the foul there with, with Santiago again. Early minutes of the game, brand new rivalry, so a lot to be expected here. Wall does his job. And he's wide open. Hopkins sporting the blonde here, number 29. Hopkins and Carmichael with the blonde hair. Hopkins and Carmichael with the blonde hair. So Hopkins uh, with the longer blonde hair and right back. It's Pope to Zarnik. Mustang seeking to build an attack. Balls played back out wide to Bynum. Hopkins finds a Dimabua. Oh, he's on. Knighton is in. It's an opportunity. Knighton has an opportunity to cut back. He's squaring. Nice in passing. Fast moving action here at Edwards Stadium. Mustang slowing it down a little bit. Seeks to maintain a little bit of control here in the midfield. That was a possibility there with Knight and getting some space there. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good run. Like, like we're seeing right now, fouls coming in and out. There's plenty of physical action. And with this intensive a game, those breakthroughs are just going to keep coming in. SMU with the high line there. And, and a simple through ball being played. Couldn't execute on it, but surely we'll see much more of that throughout the game. 
Should be noted as well that SMU is playing with a line of three in the back, so that should be interesting. Two center midfielders holding midfielders right in front of them, so we'll see what their block of five looks like. Hopkins skewing that one. And so goal kick for SMU. Mustang seeking to build out of the back. Ball intercepted by Guzman. It's a lovely crowd here too. It's not just a beautiful, beautifully Berkeley day, but it's a great day for folks to come and enjoy soccer. If you're in the Bay Area, it's not too late for you to make your way to Edwards Stadium on the campus of the University of California, Berkeley. And for those of you who are watching on the ESPN, the ESPN app, we're grateful to have you with us today. And your guy, Dr. Ty, with the great Fernando Andrade, Cal soccer alum. We have someone who knows what it's like to be in the locker room for the Golden Bears, and he brings great expertise. Uh, and so we're excited to have him and you with us uh, for this match. This game, Dr. Ty, will, will be a battle of the midfield just because of the formations we're seeing it happen right now. Great little move. Yeah, he had two defenders on him and he was able to find some space. As I was saying, I think it'll be a battle of the midfield. Uh, SMU coming out with a box midfield, uh, a four, four in the middle, two defensive, two attacking, uh, three box three, if you will, three, four, three right there in the middle. Um, Cal with a more traditional four, two, three, one. 4-4-2 when defending, so it'll be very, very interesting to see the matchups there in the midfield. Cal trying to exploit the line of three, but SMU controlling the game so far. Long throw. Ball ping-ponging around in the box. It's Cal player who's down in a little bit of discomfort. Clock has stopped. So that Medical attention can be attended. Well, we have the break, break, break in play for now. One of the things that uh, Coach Leonard uh, Griffin shared in our pre-production meeting uh, in, in reference to SMU, he talked about that they're good. They're good. They're a, a footballing team, right? That um, they try to break you down on the dribble and the pass, which you, I think we saw already on that little move there on the right flank. Um, and it's a game that we have to come and show out, was his, was his, his language. He uh, talked about the importance of Nanso Adima Boa continuing to build on the momentum of his goal against NC State in the last match. They unfortunately lost 2-1, but um, he's hoping that he and his entire front line can continue to build. And then he also mentioned the significance of his goalkeeper, who has done well in goal this far this season. I mean, he, he's a former teammate of mine. Uh, actually, my, my roommate when we used to travel back in the day in my, my senior year, so great guy Marco he's he's been all over the place last season and freshman year just starting not starting starting not starting and right now he's he's had a pretty good season so far so hopefully he can just keep gaining momentum a veteran on the team now uh, junior now so the the kids are getting old you know <laughs> making me feel old for sure uh, that's funny yeah it happens fast doesn't it very fast I mean cu coming back here uh, I was just texting my, my alumni friends you know about back at Edwards so many memories from our, our Ritz home shout out to the Ritz shout out to the team all those guys watching right now um, plenty of memories be, being back here yeah always great to be able to have alums with us and uh, we appreciate you and all those who are watching uh, from the Cal community but also from the Mustangs community grateful to be in the, S in the ACC with you all and to have you with us um, enjoying the beautiful game nice interplay this is an opportunity for the Mustangs it's an important and, clearance. And by the way, for SMU fans, plenty here today as well. Much more than I, than I would have expected for, for the Dallas team. Absolutely. Uh, and they were here early as well, Fernando. Uh, there was, uh, uh, in fact, uh, shout out to the family of Jalen Mitchell. Um, they were here enthusiastically uh, in, the, in the stands and wanted to make sure that we celebrated him. Um, and they... Uh, came with some noisemakers and the like, so uh, we got a little video of them having a good time. So SMU is in the building, 
Um, and Jaden Mitchell is from the state of California, so his family made their way to this match. So it's always great to see these uh, ties geographically as well. I mean, and like you said, the weather's perfect. Friday, 4 p.m., great crowd. It should be a good game, so glad, glad people were able to come out. Yeah, it's good to see student athletes making their way into this building as well, into, this, into, this, into the stadium. I see Cal women's soccer making their way. Uh, Girls scorer from yesterday, Noel Bun Flasher, who scored a game winner, making a way in the stadium in their 2 1 win uh, against St. Mary's. Cal women's soccer doing really, really well. Shout out to them. They're yeah. on fire right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. It's exciting times here at Cal Athletics. If you are in the Bay Area, you want to come out and uh, support the Golden Bears in any way you can, including tomorrow evening at 7 30, uh, Cal football uh, steps back between the lines. And so it should be uh, a great, a great uh, a match there, and tickets are available uh, for that. Speaking of connections as well, Fernando, I had an opportunity to talk to uh, head coach Kevin Hudson of SMU, uh, and you know, he talked about being excited uh, for this match. In particular, you know, uh, the last match didn't turn out the way that they had hoped, and they were looking forward to turning it around here today. Uh, he mentioned they haven't been here since 2008. It's an opportunity here. I'll pause in that. Ooh. Referee. Ooh. Oh. I'm I'm not sure that's a foul there, Dr. Ty. Not at all. That's that's a that's a tough, tough call. Referee looked at it long and hard and decided that was a penalty, much to the chagrin of the Golden Bears. And it looks like she may also be asking for a video review. That's actually news, Fernando. Uh, yesterday was the first time that video review took place with the women's soccer match, and there were consequential calls. Uh, penalty that was uh, a goal that was taken away for all side uh, as well as some other key calls and so we have our first one here today I don't know if they call it VAR <laughs> yeah it, sh I mean, it, sh they, it should be VAR, it's certainly right? a video review here well that's great that they have it here uh, obviously it just makes the game much more just the call and on the field of a penalty kick is under video review yeah video review uh, surely similar to the VAR process I could see the referee from from up here just taking a look it's, it's what should be done personally from what I saw. Obviously, we don't have the replay, but I think, I think that's not a penalty whatsoever. SMU does a great job to get behind the back line, but and, and from my point of view from here, I, I do not believe that is a foul. Yeah, I would have to agree with you on that. Um, it looked like a, a bit of a shoulder to shoulder. Certainly, you know, soccer is a physical match, um, and it was definitely uh, an interesting call uh, we will see if the referee sticks with that call after seeing the replay with, with that being said it's also interesting because you say var and you immediately think of the pro teams right the pro sports but it should be like we we don't know what camera angles they are looking at right now i i don't see any angles on on the eastern side of the stadium which is where the contact took place so it, it'll be interesting to see what the referee's decision is after the review. Crowd is waiting with bated breath. I imagine that those of you in Texas supporting the Mustangs are doing likewise. It's referee making her way from the tent and explaining to the teams. And the reaction from the Mustangs looks like it may have gone their way. Coach Leonard Griffin uh, is looking on with frustration and asking questions. The referee seemed to signal to, to Coach Griffin that there was a, a small kick, but the referee is back taking another look. Interesting. Again, uh, the camera angle should be an interesting topic when it comes to this because I'm not sure how many cameras are out there to get this proper angle. I, I'm not sure if there is a good angle for this since it took place on the other side of the field as was previously stated but we'll see that this is a type of situation that could change a whole game we're only 11 minutes in the the clock is stopped smu though doing a great job of taking control not only of the midfield but a lot of penetration down through the right flank uh, so much dribbling we've seen this through ball took place in the exact same way so doing a great job there with their box midfield, I think that'll cause a lot of trouble 
for the California Golden Bears today just because of the setup with the lineup, with the strategy. So we'll see what the referee's call is and how the rest of the 79 minutes go today. Well, I think one of the other things, too, that's important about this call is that it's precedent setting as it relates to what I think the teams would expect in future calls, right? Um, not just in the box, but anywhere on the pitch. And so if that's a foul, then one would hope that there'll be consistency. We'll see what the call is. Wow. She's awarded a penalty after multiple iterations. And it looks like she may be taking a card out of her pocket. Well, if there's a card, must have seen something on the video. But again, that did not, from our angle over here, quite far away, it just did not look After like it at all. Review, the call on the field is confirmed. Looks like referee has also issued a yellow card to number 33, Bo Morrison. Yellow card shown to California, number 33, Bo Morrison. That comes in the 12th minute. All right, Marco. Early adversity for the Golden Bears. Penalty. Opportunity for the Mustangs to get on the score sheet. Standing over the ball. Looks like number 10, Bailey Sparks from Plano, Texas. Looking to send the state of Texas and those watching into euphoria. His head coach has said he's a key marksman and goal scorer for them. This is an opportunity for him to prove it. Well done. Go, 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 go! Mustangs. 1 0 to the SMU Mustangs. Bailey Sparks strokes the penalty home and then wheels away in celebration. And then receives a yellow card for something that the referee did not feel was appropriate. We're 12 minutes in, not even 12 minutes, we're in the 12th minute. And already two yellow cards, Fernando, and a pretty high standard that's being set as relates to decorum or fouls and what will be allowed in the box. This is going to be an interesting 80 minutes. Very, very interesting 80 minutes to come. Like you already said, two bookings, one for each side. Quite unnecessary to, to get a a booking from a celebration but the Mustangs are up that's a great finish side netting to the right of the keeper not much Marco could have done there yeah he uh, went the right way he went the right way it's just that that, that ball is put away there's no goalkeeper unless you're really <laughs> telegraphing it and they know you're good where you're going most goalkeepers aren't getting to that that was well taken for sure very well taken we'll see what happens now like we've mentioned, the very first three minutes were very physical. Now there are two bookings, one on each side. Already a goal. We see a foul again. It, it, there's a lot that could happen here in the next 80 minutes, Dr. Sai. Yeah, I mean, that's a shoulder to shoulder. This, this is, it's, referee's setting a really high standard here of, of expectations. Um, it would seem there's not a lot of physical contact that's going to be allowed in this match. That ball is sprayed uh, a bit loosely by number 12. Lamar Bynum, but it's retrieved nevertheless. Good interplay to recover and then weave the way Very through the good. midfield. It's a good looking run and lots of time and space potentially. SMU making a wonderful, wonderful uh, back to front move here. This is pretty to watch. Adima Bua. I believe that SMU run was from number 20. Uh, Nicola, that was an impressive way to save that initial pass. That was not looking good. A 1-2 to come out. That's a, a job very well done. And yeah, that was a swift move from back to front, wasn't it? Very, very smooth. Completely changed that the way that ball was looking. It was not looking good. I would personally maybe would have even let it go out. It was not looking like a good situation and definitely made the best of it. It'll be interesting to see here how the front two for the California Golden Bears can respond to the defense here when, when SMU builds out. It's definitely causing trouble already. Hopkins does a great job there, but it, it'll cause a lot of trouble with three center backs, if you will, 
and just providing so much width from, from the wing backs coming back in. Certainly the Golden Bears are going to be relying on Dimabua and others. Dimabua has the ball here. Scored a really smart finish uh, against NC State last time out. Striking the ball off his left from just outside the 18-yard box. And Coach Leonard Griffin will be looking for similar pinpoint accuracy. Very, very soft call once again. This but match, this match already has the makings of what could be pretty intense interchange between the players. You see a growing frustration with what I think some of the players may feel are questionable uh, calls as it relates to just the physicality that would be allowed. And so when fouls are called, there seems to be a, a frustration that it's being called a foul. And so... Um, seems that there's been a, a standard that's set and it'll be interesting to see how that standard is maintained and managed um, particularly when you have players on yellow cards so early which again will present a big issue there's so much time yet you don't want any more unnecessary bookings uh smu already has an unnecessary booking cal plenty of fouls already in the first 15 minutes of this match so you'll have to be careful there keep a a blue head as coach griffin would say stay calm under this pressure, under this intensity, and, and be smart. Opportunity at the top of the box. It's Mitchell found his teammate. Well done. Space, squaring, trouble, danger. Just ran out of real estate there. Good kick to the Golden Bears. Cal definitely has to be much more careful with those opportunities in the box. Just have to clear it immediately. Failed to do so and could have been a bigger issue than it truly ended up being. But SMU again on the attack, on the transition. That's Salvo who's making a run in space. Mustangs are bossing the game a little bit right now. Maintaining possession. I really think it has to do with the formation. I, I really think that'll be the key difference in this game. Cal, unfortunately, looking quite lost at the moment, not knowing what to do with that box midfield right now. The three center backs building out are causing trouble for Nonzo and Malcolm, and that's just allowing SMU to build from there and attack in the, the final third. Sescoscia. Well done by Hopkins. Bynum. Attempt there, but a little bit too much on it. Broger safely collects. And Golden Bear is seeking to build out of the back themselves here. Long ball played into the midfield to actually find some space. Adam Abua finds Knighton with space. Knighton screaming. I think Knighton would have liked that ball played into his path a little bit better. Ooh. This is a dangerous back pass. Could be trouble. Broger to the rescue. That was a loose back pass that created a real goal scoring opportunity for the Mustangs to make it 2-0. But Broger to the rescue. Uh, Cal just really has to maintain the ball. In the past three possessions, they lost it twice in transition. And this previous one with Knighton's opportunity that they just got to the other box in three passes. You want to maintain the ball a bit. You see Adrian Guzman right now dropping in between the center backs, which is honestly what I think he should be doing at this time. Just gain the ball a bit like they are right now. Connect a few passes, gain some rhythm, some confidence, even if it's just in the back line as they're doing right now, and then build from there because, as mentioned, there hasn't been that much possession. Long ball again. You're, you're playing a 50-50 ball, and, and I'm not sure that's going to work with, with this strong back line that SMU is playing with at the moment. And that, ooh. And it actually seemed like, Fernando, as if the Golden Bears were sort of surrendering this central part of the pitch 
where you see five M S M M U players with two cow bears, right? And then you see what it looks like, well, five attackers up top, well, that's, albeit two out wide. It's interesting. That's what I'm saying. With, with that box midfield for SMU, it just generates so much more numbers for them than for Cal in that midfield, which will cause so much trouble for possession. Hopkins, again, very well done to get out of that. But those numbers, that box midfield, that's what allowing that's what it's allowing SMU to press much more intensely than, than Cal is able to manage at the moment. But some would say that even if a box midfield, that there is also perhaps a cross coming in, that there's also a shortage of Golden Bears in the midfield in the central areas, as if the tactic currently is perhaps to try to exploit the wider margins of the pitch, and then maybe they're looking to play the long ball uh, to the folks up top. But we'll see how that plays out. The, the issue with that, Dr. Tai, is that SMU does have their win back, wing backs, and then with that box midfield for SMU, two midfielders on each side can immediately press top and bottom. So you're just going to get outnumbered every single time. We'll see how Coach Griffin manages this, but it should be an interesting day for Guzman and the midfielders yeah. at the office today. Yeah, for those who are less familiar with soccer, it's a highly uh, tactical uh, sport, tactical game, and it's about positioning and location of your resources on the pitch and where your players are. Uh, technique is important, what the, what the players do on the ball, um, but right now it would seem that SMU have found some joy with their initial tactics uh, and it's leading to um, a little bit of uh, perhaps early frustration for the Golden Bears who are finding themselves one now one nil down after an early penalty from Bailey Sparks who um, slotted the ball home um, in the 12th minute. Great ball out wide again, right flank for SMU. Let's see what can happen. Shot comes in. Looked like the keeper may have seen that a little late. Was able to dive and collect. Not too dangerous, but I believe that's the second or third time that an SMU Mustang is just free at the top of the box. Cal, again, needs to be careful with, with those opportunities. With I mean, already four shots for, for the SMU Mustangs. Cal still waiting to, to put a shot up. So definitely have to be careful there. Top of the box is being exploited. So keep an eye out for that with the next throughout the next 70 minutes. Coach Hudson, before the match in our uh, pre-production, pre-match conversation, he talked about um, the fact that, uh, that SMU haven't been back here to Cal since 2008. He did say it looks pretty sim similar. The, the cities look good. And he talked about also that there's some good ties between SMU and Cal that uh, head coach Kevin Grimes, former head coach Kevin Grimes, actually played at SMU, was a major uh, builder of that program, uh, helped to build it into a powerhouse in, from 1986 to 89. I was a two-year captain uh, there for SMU after, and I was a graduate for a degree in economics from, from SMU. So, and he actually helped to recruit the current head coach of SMU, Hudson, uh, there. So there's some ties. Uh, historically, SMU have been a top 25 program and um, they're excited about this larger national program, uh, platform, excuse me, uh, in the ACC. Space there on the right. Keep an eye out for the top of the box again. Amazing run and creating space and look at the shoot. Well blocked. Dimabua joining the defensive effort. Wow. Would not expect that to, to be a booking, but it is. I'm not sure how, how, how I feel about some of these calls today. The, both teams are playing very, very physical matches. It is intense, as it should be but I don't think the, the referee is having it today. There doesn't seem to be much warning before the yellow card. A lot of times, you know, sort of like, like you know, the, the relationship with the referee and the player sort of feels a little bit like school sometimes, right? But before you get 
you know, the recess detention or whatever, you'll get the warning that says, if you do that again, this is, you're getting lunch taken away from you immediately, your lunch time or recess being taken just after your first offense. An opportunity to make some substitutions though, for the midfield and up top, so we'll see what this can do for, for California. Joining the, the match for the first time, for the Golden Bears, number 18, Brendan Bow. As well as number 15, Eric Duncan. Duncan, a Decatur, Georgia native. And Bow California from Cota de Casa, California. Into the game for the Golden Bears, number five, Gaku Nishimura. Number 12, Eric Duncan. And number 18, Brendan Bell. And Duncan's actually wearing number 12 instead of number 15. Adrian and Gaku Nishimura, number five, has also joined the match. He's a tidy midfielder who joined us already from Japan. He's done some good work in the midfield in some of the previous matches we've seen. Again, not sure how I feel about that foul in the midfield, but we'll see. I think, I think the key in this game, if these calls are going to be made, it'll be interesting to see how the players adapt in in their respective final thirds, but also in the reactions. It's easy to get frustrated. It's easy to snap back at the referee, and that's very unnecessary. It's uh, it, it's it's something that could ruin the the game after a couple of bookings for the team. So we'll see how each each team respectively takes takes care of this. crowd continues to be buoyed and to grow as folks stream in to catch this match between the Golden Bears and the Mustangs. Score is 1-0 if you joined us late. The Mustangs are leading after a penalty that was taken by Bailey Sparks. You listen to your guy, Dr. Ty and Fernando Andrade for the voice of Kyle Saka. Grateful to have you with us. Good interchange there between the Golden Bears players. Cross is whipped in. This could be opportunity. It's turned. What an effort. And what a save. Critical touch. Critical, critical touch by goalkeeper Martin Dominguez, who uh, uh, pushed that one ever so slightly. I think that would have at least hit the upright or perhaps even made his way inside of the back post. But his touch knocked it out for a corner. First one for the Golden Bears. And excitement around the stadium as the Golden Bears mount a critical attack. I mean, 25 minutes in and, and finally got the first shot on, on goal, on target. So that's, that's a good sign. Very good connection. I think you, you can see some of the impact already from Eric Duncan stepping in. So we'll, we'll see how much that allows Cal to, to improve. We see Gaku, I believe, top of the box, wide alone. All players by the goalkeeper, by Dominguez, after a great save. We'll see what Cal has in store here at the moment. But Gaku, again, wide, wide open. Ball is whipped over. Oh, that's trouble! Carmichael with a great header. Santiago Hopkins sliding, passing. This is danger. Very dangerous. Carmichael sliding. Good and Bears under attack. Important interception. Good, uh, the Mustangs had an opportunity to turn defense into attack, but for an important interception by the Good and Bears defense. Clearly a setup set piece right there for, for California. Almost executed to perfection, but SMU did well on, on the defense. Carmichael getting a, a great contact there in, in the back post, and unfortunate that it didn't end up in the back of the net. Duncan going high. Dimabua going low. SMU. Going wide and finding space. Cal starting to settle in on the game now. Not as direct as before, a bit more passing, a bit more possession. 
still I would say SMU in, in a bit more control, but but we'll see. I mean, I, I think Cal is, is barely warming up a bit late, but again, great move by Santiago Hopkins. His explosiveness is definitely helping Cal just come out the back. With so many numbers in the midfield, it's it's difficult to connect passes, and, and Santiago has done a, an incredible job to just use his speed, use his physicality to, to get out of the back and create some opportunities in, in the SMU half for Cal. He's also using his guile. He's got, he's got some tricks in the bag as well. That ball looked like he may have pushed it through the put in his legs. You know, he's having to do, do a couple of things to create space and did it well. A little, little nutmeg here and there? Yeah, a little meg, a little petit pont, as they say in France. A little tunnel, as they say in Germany and other places. Ooh. Ooh. Plenty of time, plenty okay. of time. From my angle, that one felt a little heavy. <laughs> plenty of time, not, not nothing to worry about. I don't about. know how they say un go or OG in France and German, but that was a little, like, we were a little concerned when we saw that initially, right? Yeah, <laughs> under more pressure, I'd be more concerned, but I think that that's not much to worry about there for for Marco Brocker. Listen, send us a message on uh, Cal DIBJ. That's the DIBJ office that I have the honor of leading. If you know how they say un go and uh, or OG, uh, in, in, in Germany and other places. But this is an opportunity! <laughs> Gaku Nishimura. I mean, again, Cal starting to warm up now. That's two shots on, on goal, or third shot of the game, but two shots on goal now for, for Cal. Definitely warming up, definitely doing a, a great job coming out of the back, whether that's through Santiago Hopkins or, or through long balls, as we saw right now. But again, this is, this is what California needs to get back into the game. SMU dominating the, the first couple, 15 minutes or so, first quarter. But, hey, I, I think there's still so much soccer to be played. Amazing run. Space, this is oh, trouble. This ball. is danger. What a block. That's a critical block. I believe that's Bo. Bo Morrison. Critical block, even more impressive because he's on a yellow card. So everything he does now has to be inch perfect as it relates to avoiding what could be deemed a second yellow cardable offense. Yeah, great job there. Kept it clean. It was not looking great. That's an, a, a great through ball from SMU, but Bo does a, a great job to get back there. And uh... from our angle, I actually think the striker, the attacker, had a op better opportunity to sort of just bang that left footed earlier. Goal seems to be wide open. Again, um, again. See, th this is this is exactly what you don't want to see if if you're Coach Griffin right now. These reactions after the fouls. If you know the referee is is making some soft calls, you you don't want to get booked from from these reactions. You have to be smarter than that. It's already a very physical game. We're th only a third in so far, and th these little reactions they'll add up. They'll add up, and, and you don't want to, again, setting the standard, you, you don't want the standard to be quick bookings here and there, especially from, from this distance, right? You, you don't need a booking from there. So got to be careful with those reactions. Referee marches to signal uh, 10 yards where the Golden Bears can set up their wall. Two players there standing uh, about 10 yards away. 10 yards away are what we call a wall there. Ball is whipped in or curled in. Tempted to curl in, not much of a curl. He looked like he was a little disappointed. As it still looked like when you're on the golf course. I'm not a golfer, but you know, it looked like he was hopeful for a little draw there, and it didn't happen. <laughs> Similar reaction. You know, interesting to see from Cal. All three of their of their shots have come in the in the past five five or so minutes, and that's with Eric Duncan on the field. So very very good substitution there from from the Cal staff. We'll see what, what they can produce, but that's that's an interesting dynamic that Nonzo and, and Eric have right now. Again, providing a lot of physicality up top. SMU now seems to have dropped into a 4-4-2 formation. So I, I think Coach Hudson definitely realized that. Uh, three shots in the past five minutes with this substitution definitely requires a bit more in the back. And at least on defense right now, a 4-4-2 instead of the three box three that they were playing. Yeah, Cal made some adjustments similar to what you mentioned uh, earlier. You know, how would they tactically respond to that box? Uh, and the addition of Duncan uh, looks to have been uh, critical in perhaps the shift in momentum for the Golden Bears. Well, it, it also seems as if Nonzo is now playing 
as a second striker instead of in the 10 role that he was playing in. Speaking of the German own goal that you were looking for, German Isaiah Thomas stepping in now, so so maybe we can ask him instead, no? Into the match for the first time this afternoon, number 25, Isaiah Thomas, placing Santiago Hopkins. Isaiah Thomas, number 25, making his way on the pitch for the first time today from Schraubter, Germany. Now, and I feel like I'm not saying that with all the pizzazz that you need to say with the German accent. Maybe someone needs to help me out with that, but I'm, I'm not going to try that I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> Chris we'll have to ask him after for, for the own goal and for the Absolutely. hometown. And number 36, Noah Irvin. A great 30 minutes for Santiago Hopkins. Did a great job there. His explosiveness really, really helped Cal create some sort of build out the back. So great 30 minutes for, for the senior. SMU have also made some substitutions. Number 27, Ryan Clayton Pimentel from Leander, Texas, has joined. He's a freshman defender. As well as number 36, Noah Irving from Phoenix, Arizona, who's a freshman midfielder. He's also on the pitch. Good effort. Great little physicality there from senior Kevin Carmichael. But again, you cannot allow for these through balls to come in that's I believe the second one in, in in the past seven minutes or so from SMU they're doing a great job to find those little through balls and could definitely cause some trouble moving forward speaking of causing some trouble moving forward the Mustangs are hoping that Chris Demon number 24 from Dallas Texas who's a forward a sophomore could also cause some trouble um, going forward he sporting a, some nice little looks like some locks there he's um, energetic up top He's also joined the fray for SMU. Some more substitutions. Yeah, it looks like Nonzo Adimabu are now playing as a striker for Cal. Eric Duncan either playing next to him or playing more in that 10 role. Additional substitutions for the Mustangs. Again, Niv, very soft. Number eight, Niv Bergovic. Sophomore midfield has come on, as well as Stefan Sogamoya. Number 30, from Santa Clarita, California. Sogamoya is a freshman forward. We're in the 35th minute here at Edwards Stadium. The score is 1-0 in favor of the SMU Mustangs, who scored via a penalty taken by Bailey Sparks after what many would call or suggest was a highly questionable, contentious call for the penalty. Certainly the Golden Bears faithful were disappointed with the call. Call actually went to video replay, and the referee uh, stood by the call, and Sparks made no mistake with the finish. That couldn't be questioned. It was a well-taken penalty that left Golden Bears goalkeeper Mark Broger with very little he could do about it. From uh, historic goal, though. Historic goal must be said. Uh, very first ACC goal at home, I believe, at, in, at Berkeley. So for men's soccer, obviously, women's soccer, plenty of those for now. But very first one, as well as video review, must have been the first time for men's soccer. So, it's a new day. It's a new day, new era. The ACC. Corner for the Mustangs.
headed in. Dimabua going high. Mustangs maintaining possession, and now the cross is ripped in. A good-looking cross. Top of the box again. Shooting. Great block there. Duncan playing strong. Transition, Thomas. here we go. To Adimabua. Thomas asking for it. Bow is played through, but too strong. Adimabua, Adimabua holding his hands on his head, realized that he missed his teammate there. With what was a really good penetrating run by Isaiah Thomas, the German. I'm not sure about that one again, but again, the reaction. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. This is what you don't want to see. Exactly what you don't want to see. Clock is stopped. Surely, either a very strong warning or a very unnecessary booking coming non so Adimabu's way. Looks like referee has taken to have a conversation on this one. Luckily for him. That's interesting because... <laughs> Um, that's not how the first 25 minutes or so were, were played out. I mean, it, it's good to see, I think, at times where there's a conversation, right? The relationship between the referee and the players is a relationship. There is rapport that's built. And it looks like a referee has decided to uh, have a conversation rather than um, being punitive with the yellow card. But very certainly, Adima Bua is fortunate not to get a yellow card on that one. Very, very, very fortunate. Exactly what I was going to say. I don't think it should have been called... I, I really do agree with them, but you don't want to react that way. Once it, once it happens, you don't want to stack up any bookings, and I'm very fortunate, not only for Nonzo, but for, for the California team. Well, frankly, in, in most soccer circles, when you, if you slam the ball out, down like that, that actually is a yellow card. You're going to get a yellow card in the space. So there are other calls that we thought probably weren't a yellow card, but that actually, in most circles, is a yellow card. Very fortunate, to say the least. Really great tackle by Carmichael. He not only tackles the ball, but maintains possession. Class personified at the back. It's so fun just seeing him throughout the years. I was not only his teammate, but, but also a, a housemate of his. And the maturity he's playing with now, a senior veteran on the team, got drafted by Nashville in the, in the MLS Super Draft last January. So preparing for that. And the maturity he's playing with now, how he's holding the back line for, for Cal is so impressive. Got some starts even in his freshman year in the back line, but but now completely taking over, wearing the armband, being the captain. It, it's so exciting to, to see how far he's come. Yeah, he was drafted in the MLS uh, draft as well as Wyatt Meyer, who is uh, not on the pitch. Um, and it's a significant uh, part of this Cal team who's not able to play due to injury. Um, but that's, I think, a true testament to this program that you had two players who were drafted uh, in the MLS draft, last, last uh, most recent draft, and, uh, and that both of them also chose to come back to play, which I think speaks to the spirit of this team and their commitment to their California Golden Bears. Yeah, I mean, th there were many that would say that it, it was one of the best center back duos, not only in the conference, but even in the nation, both of them getting drafted last season and both still having some semesters to go to graduate. So definitely the, they're coming back for, for one last season says a lot about the program. But at the same time, very, very nice to see two center backs getting drafted by the same team in the MLS. I think that says a lot, not only about how they play, but the, their relationship both on and off the field. Great to know they'll have that, that, those Cal degrees. Of course. Speaking of Cal degrees, son, uh, uh, Fernando, I, I, uh, I, I ran into a, a football player this week who was on his way from class, and I just was, had a brief conversation. He, I asked him what was his major, and he, he mentioned or he, what is his class he was coming from, and he said his class was uh, Food Injustice was the name of the class. <laughs> wow. And I just thought that's so Berkeley, isn't it, right? <laughs> I think that's one of the most Berkeley classes out there. <laughs> You know, Berkeley, wow. there's, there's never a class that's just like a regular class, you know, like, you know, home economics. So, no, it's not just food, but food injustice. And I thought, wow. come on, I love that. On his way to practice after beating Auburn last weekend um, and, uh, and preparing for a match on uh, or a game on Saturday night. So uh, shout out to all the student athletes across the country who are uh, doing their best in the classroom, uh, in their sports of choice, uh, in the community. Uh, it's impressive. And that is a two-hand push. That's the least subtle 
I think that is a ball. <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Um, that, 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 there was, there was, yeah, that was, that was interesting. Yeah, I think out of all the calls we've seen today, that is most definitely a call. There was a booking made, as there should have been. I don't. The clock doesn't seem to be stopped, though. But I believe the booking was made. I I don't know. I haven't seen the card dawned yet. Was it not given? I'm pretty sure it was given. Let's see. The announcer will yeah. let us know. But th that 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 push was a hand check that the cornerbacks they'll be playing NFL football and college football this weekend will be proud of. Ball's ripped in. This is possible for Duncan. Great interception by the Mustangs. Accident, accident ball. But Giancarlo Mota, one of my favorite players this season thus far in the match that I've had a chance to watch. Mota is a really, really good uh, uh, defender, but he also uh, got a goal early in the season. And so uh, it's good to see him uh, recovering, covering, and uh, playing with great confidence. Again, top of the box. Cal needs to be careful with that. Surely they'll be talking about it at halftime, but being exposed right there at the at the top of the D, it's you, you got to be careful with that because one of those opportunities, they're, they're just going to find a way to get a shot off, and that's not a problem you want to hand to to Marco from that distance. As well as with that much time, there needs to be more pressure. That's a lovely touch in the middle of the park. Lovely touch. Brought that ball out of the air with a plum. I think that's number eight, Niv Berkovich. I think that was, can't really do a lot better than that. But he brought that down, that was lovely. I don't know if I had shared this thought out loud, but I've been thinking it for the last 25 minutes. And that was actually number six, Alex Salvo, who, He's also limping a little bit. I, I, I don't want to, I'm not claiming to be prophetic and I'm not trying to be a pessimist. This match also has the feel of one that if, if it finishes without a red card, that would be impressive. Just because of the nature of the yellow cards and just the, it just seems like one of those matches that, I don't know, I, I don't want to be prophetic. I don't want to, you know, <laughs> claim to be prophetic, but it just, it just seems like this is a match that's on a knife edge, if you will. It's delicately poised. But there also seems to be some vulnerability, I think, around what the players may feel should be a foul and what is actually being called a foul. I think it's an interesting dynamic, particularly with the match so closely uh, poised at one uh, nil. Uh, I'd say I would not be surprised if, there, if we see a, a red card today. A good turn. Keep an eye out for the top of the box. That's good work. It's number 27. Well done at the end by Isaiah Thomas to clear it and avoid a corner. It's Clanton Pimatel who's showing us some fancy footwork. Dancing. Adimabua trying to show his own footwork. Plays the ball quickly, finds Duncan. Duncan slows it up a little bit, sprays the ball to Mota beautifully. Mota brings it down nicely with his fluorescent green boots. Lovely touch. From Syrah to Thomas. Thomas to Carmichael. Carmichael to Morrison. Carmichael trying to find a Dimabua. Good recovery. Nice little body swerve there by Chris De De uh, Demon, who was able to earn a free uh, throw in for the Mustangs. Just under two minutes to go. In the 44th minute. Mustangs holding on to a 1-0 lead here in Berkeley, California. Oh 
It's good work to get out of a tight spot. Timabua running to try to put some pressure on the SMU defense. One minute. One minute remaining in the half. We'll see what the Golden Bears can make out of these last 50 seconds now with this throw in. Surely we'll try to at least get a shot on target from, from whatever time is remaining. Play is stopped. Timabua is taking a knock. Clock is also stopped. Yeah, whenever you get a, a hit to the head, we'll definitely have to stop the game. Dimabu is also getting some water. <laughs> Appreciate the, the efforts of the training staffs, uh, not just here, but all across the country, folks who take care of uh, student athletes and professional athletes, often unsung heroes who spend many, many hours uh, taking care of, of athletes and ensuring that they can be in their best health. So for those who are watching who also are the teams beside the teams and behind the teams, we appreciate you and the work that you do. Shout out, Alice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, don't go anywhere at halftime. We have a special uh, guest here who's uh, in the stadium that's going to come and join us after a quick break as well. So don't go too far in case you were planning to slip away and change the station or jump on a different uh, match on that app. I don't know if you want to do that. We have some cool folks in the stadium, and one of them is going to join us in the booth, special guest that is going to help us to... Um, uh, learn a bit more about the beautiful game of soccer and some of the great things that have happened nationally as well. So don't go too far. Uh, but before we go, go to that, we've got about 39 seconds to go. No stoppage time in college soccer. Like for those of you who are uh, international soccer fans like myself, I'm a big Liverpool fan. For, I, know, I guess I need to ask, who's your team, by the way? Uh, do you have team? Who's your international team Barcelona for sure ah Barcelona I must admit SMU's jerseys have a Barcelona ish eh. ish ish reminds me more of the of the Chelsea <laughs> one of the Chelsea shirts from a couple of years back where, where they tried to mix the colors I believe or if not more more Crystal Palace yeah, that, well, I would sure. say more Crystal Palace Crystal I've never, Palace seen, Crystal, I've never sure. seen Chelsea with that, that much red that front, I mean, so no, no Barca huh you're, you're, you're giving them uh, no we're not gonna you're giving them uh, Crystal Palace we'll, we'll go Crystal Palace <laughs> instead of Barca yeah. I'm thinking they might prefer Barca I don't know Probably. I would think so. Great header by Carmichael. Mota clearing. The SMU bench wanted a, a call for that, but didn't get it. Oh. Nothing. Dominguez will want to run the timeout. Ten seconds left, so Ten, that'll be the half. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero. And that's the half. Halftime score. SMU 1, California nil. Score in the first half here. Showed you being in the booth with us. And we see some future folks who are trying to make national teams and oh. MLS Cup finals. And we're looking forward to seeing what the or second half. Or get real half. jobs. I'm here to help, yeah, man. That so, too. hey, go Bears, Dr. Ty. I appreciate everyone. Um, this has just been an amazing experience. So thank you. Go Bears. Thank you for having us. Thank you for being with us. That's Alan Hopkins, folks. Join us here in the booth. Um, hope that you enjoyed that interview. Um, there are amazing people in and around this stadium and in and around Cat Athletics, and uh, he's certainly one of them. And we're grateful for the supporters of our student athletes, the networks that they get access to. Uh, super uh, grateful uh, to be in this space on a beautiful Friday afternoon. Um, it's cooled off just a little bit from our 74 degrees earlier at kickoff. It's about 71 now, but still not a cloud in the sky. The only thing I see is two black birds flying, um, green trees, um, and, and, and shadows that are lengthening to suggest that it's a little bit late in the day, uh, but not too late for, I believe, some exciting soccer and a second half that I believe is poised for some special things. Yeah, very, very exciting second half ahead of us for sure. Already again from, from the very intense first half that we saw. 
first foul one minute into the second half. I think we'll see plenty of that in this second half. Unfortunately, some bookings already taking place. We'll see the role that plays in the strategies throughout the next 44 minutes. Mustangs foraying forward. Shot blocked. But they continue to push forward, and that's going to be a free kick in a dangerous location. And ho hopefully not a card. Well, wow. It, it's, it's, it's tough, to, it's tough to, to, to understand that, if I can be honest, Fernando. I'm, I'm not quite following the, 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 the maybe there was an earlier, there was an earlier conversation. No, that was Nanso, so I'm not quite sure. I mean, you know, it's a foul. Perhaps it's, it's marginal. I, you know, we're here to call the game, but certainly folks would, I think, um, you know, have differences of opinion there. Another free kick and another yellow card. Uh, ball is just about maybe 23, 25 yards out. Perfect location for uh, someone to bend it like Beckham, perhaps, and try to uh, hit the back of the net. Fernando, you, you, you have anything in your bag from this range? I don't think I have much from, from this range, but it, it looks like it'll be going directly directly to goal. Marco Brocker just setting up the wall now, but looks like it'll it'll be taken by the, by the left footer for SMU. Or perhaps it'll be a decoy, and it'll be taken by the right footer who may try to curl it near post. Only time will tell. That's danger. Broncos saw it all the way. Pushed it over the top. In the end, a comfortable save from a dangerous location. Curled in by number seven, Karen Pino. And that's another corner for the Mustangs. Crowd is looking refreshed. Folks have stretched their legs. Players look refreshed. Referee has called Holt in play for some reason, having a conversation. It's interesting, Fernando. This we saw a similar sort of bottlenecking of players all around the goalkeeper. Like I don't, I don't really see it this much elsewhere. But this is interesting, huh? Play near post? Well, I mean, it's definitely a set piece for, for each team and a, a planned set piece, yeah. if you will. Back up from the practice grounds, I don't think that was executed the way SMU would have wanted it to, but, but surely there was something else in mind there. Clear into touch. Throw in Mustangs. Nonzo Adimabua getting the rest now with the uh, Malcolm Eric connection up top. We'll see. We'll see how that pair does throughout the Early part of this second half, surely Nonzo will be coming back in, but Eric, again, great impact on this game in the first half. Surely much more to come in this second half. Looks like SMU went back to its line of three in the back. We'll see how that plays out throughout the game. I think that, that's definitely one of the key components to this game for SMU. This is a good run. Cross coming in. Possibilities for the gonna miss. Full shot. Guzman, Duncan, space shooting. Deflection, Thomas. Free kick to the SMU Mustangs. There's a vibrant SMU Mustangs contingent in the stands. You can hear excitement and, and sounds of bows that are ringing. Mustangs are well represented here in the crowd. Long ball, a cut back. Yeah. 
They may be few in number, the fans from the Mustangs, in comparison to the Golden Bears, but they are certainly mighty. Duncan has to be careful. He's on a yellow card. No foul for Cal though. It's a foul on, on behalf of SMU there. Duncan rising high, but not making contact. Oh, what a great move. Ooh. Those are the stretches that make <laughs> my legs hurt. That was, <laughs> woo. It is okay. Yeah, Cal trying to build some sort of possession, but a bit too quick, a bit too impatient, I believe. Again, have to do what they did in, in the latter part of the, of the first half, gain control of the ball. If they have to swing, swing it back and forth in the back to, to gain that rhythm and that momentum, then, then so be it. But they need some sort of, of control in order to get forward. Surely we'll see Santiago Hopkins come back in in this second half. Helped Cal so much in, in creating out of their own half into the second half. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see what decision the Cal staff makes, but, but for now, Cal has to find a way to, to build forward. Free kick for the Golden Bears. <laughs> see instructions being given from the Mustangs assistant coaching staff. They have some international coaches there, one from Jamaica as well. Talk to him pregame. It's a good ball in. Nice little bender from Gaku. Would have wanted a bit more distance on that, but, but great corner idea. Kick. Leads to the corner kick, so we'll see what happens here. You can see Gaku calling for a set piece play again, a, a setup play, so. We'll see what California has in store. Second corner, the match for the Golden Bears. Ball's whipped in. Opportunity. Two players sort of trying to decide who would take it. Thomas rising high. The referee has blown for perhaps a foul. I don't see the Lions pressing flag up. So perhaps calling a foul? Yeah, it, it, it seemed to be a foul just on the, on the rise there for the header. Now, Fernando, your playing days at Cal, you played in the midfield defense. I've seen you in multiple positions there. What was your preferred position? Preferred definitely in the midfield. Uh, it was, that, that was how I was raised into that position, so that would have definitely been the preferred. Preferred. Oh, this is trouble. Trouble. Not much on the shot there, but again, wide open there at the top of the, of the box. Carmichael does a good job in, in closing in, but not too much trouble there for Brocker. Brocker cleaned that one up nicely. I think the players are getting used to these calls by now. Not much frustration being shown there for, for that call from the referee. Quite soft, but not much of a reaction from either side of there. You can see how SMU is just spreading the field. They are very 
wide. They're using the width of the field to their advantage. Cal quite narrow though, and and that's something they've got to be careful with on the defensive side. Space to the right. Opportunity shooting. It's there. Go 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 go. Malcolm delights it with the strike from the right. Finds the back of the onion bag to even the scores. I mean, lo looked exactly like Nanso Adimabu's goal at NC. So, great, great, great finish from the freshman. Surely that'll raise his confidence. But what a great strike, great turn, great finish. We have a game. Yeah, we, 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 we've had a game all along. And now we have um, two teams that have about 35 minutes to decide who will walk away with the points. He struck that from a long distance as well. Must have been at least 20, 22 yards. Great, great finish, great placement, fantastic turn. Just a job well done from, from the freshman. That is the epitome of hard and low. Your goal scorer, your coaches will tell you, if anything, strike it hard and low. That one traveled far, pretty much all along the ground, and as, as, as long as it seemed to travel, people couldn't get to it. Well struck and well taken, uh, beautiful strike. And the intensity now, you, you could feel it building back up. SMU starting to react, Cal reacting as well. The fans are engaged. You were talking about student athletes previously, so good to see student athletes here supporting the men's soccer team, and, and you can feel the energy after that goal. So lots to come in the next 35 minutes of this match. Crowd is becoming more vocal. SMU seeming to, to struggle in the first 11 minutes of this match. Not much possession as, as they had in the first half. Trying to build something here, but again, struggling in the transitions. Referee gets in the way of Gok, who prevents them from, from defending, so allows SMU to build. But again, not, not managing to keep control in, in Cal's defending half. Cal definitely coming out strong in this second half. And uh, SMU maybe wasn't wasn't ready for that. Nice touch. Zelizet is showing all that he has in his bag. He's not just a goal scorer, but that touch, bring the ball down out of the air, was well taken. I believe that may also be, I oh know that's that's Eli. I was gonna say Brendan with the blonde hair, but no, it's it's Eli, the freshman. Ball is played out wide to number 20. Well done from Adrian Guzman, getting more involved in the game. Nice step over by Guzman that encourages the fans. Shirley Bell would have wanted to have done better, but Cal regains possession of the ball. You have to say that momentum has shifted a little bit. Would you say, Fernando? Yeah, I mean, it's what I was just saying now. I don't think SMU is ready for the intensity that Cal came out with in this half. You would have wanted to see this from Cal from the very beginning if you're Leonard Griffin, but whatever was said in at that halftime locker room talk is clearly working for, for the Golden Bears now. So flick on, ooh. 
no intention there from, from the freshman, but that, that's going to have to be a booking, considering that is the goalkeeper that was hit. Collision there between Selicet and goalkeeper number 18, Marcin Dominguez. Frustration shown by Bynum, who didn't take kindly to the collision and seeking to defend his goalkeeper. Nobody ever ever likes when your your goalkeeper gets hit, but it's part of the game. You know, there's at least in this play, there wasn't much of a real intention besides to get the ball, and it was pretty unavoidable to to avoid. It was it was it was impossible to avoid that that collision. Short kick is definitely not what he, what the SMU team had in mind. Well, 61 minutes, I'm sorry, uh, 31 minutes to go. And I don't think we're finished with the girls. Adrian Guzman doing a great job in getting a bit more involved in the game, gets the nutmeg and foul there. I think that's definitely what this team needs. There's only... Only three seniors on the field for California right now. A very, very young team. Plenty of new guys with the new coaching staff throughout the past three seasons now for, for the reign of Leonard Griffin after the Kevin Grimes era. But every now and then you need that senior leadership to show up and, and that's what Adrian Guzman is, is doing at this very moment. You need that in the midfield. You have that in the back line from Kevin Carmichael and up top from Eric Duncan, but you need to see a bit more of that from from Adrian Guzman, who who now seems to be defending the freshman Malcolm, so some some big brother, older brother protection right there is all. Whipped in. Short again from Gaku. Counter attacking possibilities. Ball was punted into the air. Look more like a punt that you may see tomorrow evening at 7 30 when the California Golden Bears take on San Diego State at Memorial Stadium. Um, taken cleanly by the goalkeeper who looked like he was taking a fair catch in American football, right, Fernando? Yeah. <laughs> we'll leave that for tomorrow's game. Some substitutions for California. California substitution entering the match. Number 19, Alfredo Ortiz, placing Eli West. Here we go, Eric Duncan, Duncan winning the ball. And it's Eliza. It's Eliza with space deflected almost into the path of his teammate. Thomas. Oh, here we go. SMU on the counter. Carmichael sliding. Great Bow job. picked the ball up there. Finds Gaku. It's it. Elias has had a good spell here in the second half. He's been in and about a lot of positive things for the Golden Bears and leading the attack, as well as with Duncan. I mean, the goal scorer. Absolutely. 
And in addition to the goals, you see him also just getting stuck in and helping to um, pressure from the front. nicely off the chest of Bynum. Nice pass, space in the midfield. Trying to spit the lines there, but only as far as number 33, Bill Morrison. Nice ball that finds Duncan, who seeks to create space, finds space between his defender. Referee sought to play advantage, and then blew the foul when there was none. No, and definitely, definitely did get a little tug there, I believe. That's the third free kick in a row that California just leaves it short. Those opportunities are premium opportunities. This is an interesting ball. It was looking like a good opportunity to counter for, for the Mustangs, but couldn't make the best of it there. Interesting call there from the referees. Gave it, gave the throw to the Mustangs, but great change of possession, change of play. Behind them, screen. This is problems. It looks like number twenty-one for. The Mustangs, Daniel Escorcia has been nipping about, doing some things there, looking to get on the end of crosses and in some good positions. Groans of frustration from the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> dealt with by Bo, Bo Morrison. Great header in the box, but. Throw to the Mustangs. Ah, <laughs> oh, great little move. It's a strong shield. That's good work. Called his name. Less than two minutes ago, and he rewards that shout out with some good hold up play. Number 21, Daniel Escorcia. Ooh, good work. Bo Morrison having a, a really, really strong showing in this second half. Struggled a bit at the beginning of, of the first half with, uh, with the penalty, the foul on the penalty, which I heard from some fans at halftime that. It was the correct call, a little clip there at, in the back of the boot, but great showing from Bo Morrison, the freshman from Sacramento, in this second half, holding the back line with 
with a senior vet veteran, Kevin Carmichael. How many more goals do you do you think we'll, we'll see tonight? I'm anticipating that there will be at least one. I'm think, I imagine a game winner. I see a game winner. I think it'll be 2-1, game winner for sure. What side to be determined, but I, I agree. I think we have at least one, one game winner in store for us. You've heard it here first, folks. We'll see whether the voice of Cal Soccer Broadcast team, that we know, if we know what we're talking about, SMU again on the transition, playing like Cal did in the first half. Much more transition, not much possession in, Ooh, in the second work. half. But we'll see if he can make something out of this. Great defending by, by the German, Isaiah Thomas. It's an opportunity for SMU shooting. It's an important block. Again, Bo Corner. Morrison, fantastic defending in the second half from the freshman. And doing so uh, on a yellow card. He got a yellow card in the 12th minute. If you know anything about defending and having to do so with very little margin for error, uh, he should be commended. Uh, he's played uh, most of the match on a yellow card and has done well to not only tackle well, but to do so without any further infractions that will cause him to get a second yellow. Corner from Bailey Sparks, the goal scorer. Near post, that's a great hatter. Shot in dangerous areas again. Oh, a little fancy footwork. Very similar to the corner kick from the corner kick that we saw in the first half from, from California with great connection, but also a great block from the defense there. Some fans just didn't agree with his with throw-in call, but we'll see what the Mustangs can make out of it. <laughs> Headed Trouble. back in. Not too difficult for Marco Brocker, but definitely not ideal to head it back into the inside of the box for California. It's interesting, as I reflect on my pre-match conversation with head coach Kevin Hudson of SMU, uh, Fernando, he mentioned a couple of players um, that we should keep our eyes on. Um, one was, take a guess, um, the goal scorer number 10, Bailey Sparks. I guess if you were number 10 in soccer, you, you, you're supposed to have the juice, right? You're supposed to have the sauce. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> Good defensive work there. He also mentioned... Number seven, we mentioned is a little underrated in Pino, uh, who we've mentioned his name a couple of times. And he mentioned number 21, Daniel Escorcia. And I mentioned his name a couple of times recently. So uh, he may have known what he was talking about there. He also highlighted Jalen Mitchell, who he said had a good start to the season. And so I wonder if any of those folks that he mentioned will show up and do something special in the last uh, 20 minutes of this match. I mean, Bailey Sparks has had a, a tremendous game. He, he's been doing a, a good job essentially carrying the, the attack for SMU on the ball here again. Seems to be all over the field right now. Was right-sided a few moments ago and now off of the left flank creating some play for SMU. But, but not that many shots recently for SMU. Again, they dominated the first half, got a goal off of a penalty kick, but, but not much after that since, since then. Not many difficult saves. I'm not even sure if there's been a, a real difficult save from Marco Brocker today. Everything either to his hands or just a tip over the bar, but that one penalty was well struck and 
That leaves us at 1-1 at with 19 minutes left here on the clock. And it looks like Coach Griffin is looking to turn the screws of a triple substitution that he's preparing for. Well, here, here's where you look for, for the consistency, right? It's a, a foul on the goalkeeper again, but the forward from SMU only gets a, a warning rather than the booking like California did. Not as intense as, as the previous foul, but fundamentally the same thing. I think what we're going to see now with the triple substitution, it's, it's the three men on top for Cal. So with 20 minutes left, they will be very well rested and ready to go, ready to make a difference here in the last 20 minutes for California. Try to get the game winner. Looks like it may be uh, Bracken, Bracken Sierra, uh, Adima Bua, as well and as Justin Knighton. Yeah, potentially Knighton back at the bench, but would not be surprised if he's back, back on the pitch. Knighton actually scored a really good goal back in his home area, of the, in the L.A. area. A game winner on his birthday. On his birthday. He'll be hoping that he could um, replicate that. Duncan looking strong. Using some dial. A little body swear at the create space. And now he's cutting back and using his, his size. A smart run by Duncan. Can he go all the way? All right, Duncan. That deserved the back of the net to rumble after the amazing run from Duncan using strength and speed and poise. Curling one. That was everything but the finish. What a, number 12, Eric Duncan. What a run from the 6'4 senior. Last play of, of his time right now on the pitch, but fantastic run using his physique to his advantage, showing off some moves, being smart with how he shields the ball. Just couldn't get the ball in the back of the net. If he scores that one, you're you know you're you're running, you're pulling your jersey on that one. You know you, if you, if you I guess we shouldn't advocate for this, but you, you may even I know some, some folks may even take their jersey off and not want to take the yellow card. I know you wouldn't do that for them in that situation. You're a heady player, right? But with, with, with the yellow cards today, I'm not sure that's the best idea. <laughs> with 18 minutes left on the game. Oh, that was special. But it, I mean, if he if he if he adds the finish to that, that that's that's then and then then and then potentially. Man, that was a good run. That was a good run. He mesmerized the crowd with that one. We were all waiting to just shout. That was good. That was good. I'm sure his family back in Atlanta are enjoying that one. Would not be surprised if we see him back in, in the game later in the second half. So, Fernando, I want to also just make some connections. You know, our, this is a historic match that you're watching. First time Cal men's soccer is playing an ACC opponent as members of the ACC. So you are part of history. Thank you for joining us. Uh, for those of you who are uh, doing your research, uh, I wonder, do you know what SMU stands for? What's, the, what's that acronym? Do you know? I want to make sure we can become familiar with our, our new uh, ACC friends. Of course, Southern Methodist University. Southern Methodist University. Fun fact, uh, my childhood best friend, Marcos Curiel, shout out to him. I know he's watching this game right now. He is an alum there for, for SMU, came out to, to watch us play a couple games here while I was with the California Golden Bears here at Edwards Stadium. But... I know he's watching, proud alum of, of the Mustangs. Um, I've been to their campus myself. Famous tournament, Dallas Cup, is, is out there. So a common campus to visit when you're in your academy years. Very beautiful facilities from what I remember. And great program. I mean, you mentioned already Kevin Grimes and, and the history he has there. Historical player for SMU, historical coach for the California Golden Bears. I, I think it's, it's great that... SMU and Cal will be competing plenty moving forward across all sports, but specifically here with, with soccer and, and men's soccer more specifically. Or as some people call it around the world, football. Footy. Um, and for those of you who are following other sports schedules, uh, the California Golden Bears American football, for the football that you throw the ball more than you use your feet, but we'll, we'll leave that there for another. But they will play uh, against each other on November 30th in Dallas. All right, so... Um, make sure you mark your calendars. That would be a trip that you may want to make if you are part of the Golden Bears fan base. Go down there and perhaps maybe go catch a, a Dallas Mavericks game as well and support Cal alums Jason Kidd 
and Sint Marshall, who's the CEO of the Dallas Mavericks. We have lots of connections here at Cal. Uh, great people doing great things all around the world. And be sure that for our SMU fans, make sure you book a trip at some point soon to come to the Bay Area to support one of the Mustang teams playing here. This valley is beautiful, and uh, there's nothing like the views of the Bay Area and the sunshine. We've, set, we've had like 74 degrees for almost every match that we've done in this broadcast booth. So um, join us. We're glad to have you as ACC partners, and we're looking forward to spending more time with you uh, on the competitive landscape. Stop and play to attend to what looked like maybe some cramping or some physical challenge. There, 73rd minute. Double header by Carmichael. Very, very well done from the uh, senior center back. Dima Bua is up top. Zelazit has remained on the pitch. Coach is feeling good about what he did as a goal scorer. Fans making their feelings known about that tackle. Fernando, how much do you, the fans of the players you think hear what the fans are saying, particularly on this in this stadium? Do you do you remember hearing what fans were saying, or do you tune them out? I'm thinking about my playing days, but I, I'm interested in this particular arena. I haven't had the chance to touch this pitch as a player. Well, I mean, the, the fun fact here about Edwards Stadium is that in in the fall, it's used as a soccer facility, but in the spring, it's used as a track and field facility. So providing that, that there is that space between the field and the fans by the, the track, you can't really hear as much as you'd think. Obviously, for, for us right now, headphones on, hot mic on, uh, it's, it's, it's even louder than, than what it actually is to, to hear their voices right by us. Shout out to the, to the student athletes here cheering, but... But no, when you're on the field, even on the bench, honestly, even like when you're not playing, it's, it's quite difficult to, to hear. As in when you're playing other opponents and they are much closer to the field, that's where it gets a bit trickier. Yeah, we've been to some of the cozier, as in closer, uh, stands to feel spaces, and it's definitely a different atmosphere. Atmos Edwards Stadium has a really special atmosphere. And speaking of track and field athletes, um, you come here at other times of the year, you may see some big divots in the field from hammer, throw, hammer throwing and, uh, and shot puts that are being thrown on the pitch. And shout out to our own Cameron Rogers, who won the gold medal uh, in, the, in the women's hammer throw at the most recent Olympics. Um, those divots are no longer on the field now because of the hard work of our facilities team. And so shout out to them who, uh, who have this pitch, like I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, looking like carpet. It's beautiful to play on. It's nothing like playing on a great pitch. Helps your touch, but it also, I think, makes the ball rule, move tr uh, in a true fashion. And certainly, uh, Zelizet's finish, I think, benefited from the grounds crew and, and the work there in the Goldmouth area because that ball just rolled and rolled and rolled until it was cushioned into the back of the net. I think that's what's special, too, about playing here in the Bay Area. Uh, especially throughout these months of the year. It's beautiful weather and that allows for a beautiful field. Corner for the Mustangs. Strong hatter. Slides it. Shot. This is danger. That ball continue to rise like a rocket. Had potential, but nothing to worry about at the end of the day there for Marco. Marco Brocker, very solid match from him. Good season so far. Very excited to see what he, he'll be able to do throughout the next couple of months. Just over 13 minutes to go, Fernando. I'm, I'm thinking that neither team will be satisfied with a draw. What do you think? It's been a, a fairly even match thus far, but I, I don't think anybody here will be happy to share some points. Both teams still pressing. SMU starting to gain a bit more control here in the second half. Seeing a bit more of what we were seeing in the first half for them. They switched their formation, looking more like a 4-4-2 now. I think that's a smart call for them. Seems to be much more beneficial. It looks like they're setting up for a long throw here, taking, taking the advantage of, of some strong throws. So we'll see what they can make of it. Strojevic. Looking to propel this ball into the box. And he does so. That's a really long throw. Good throw. 
Those long throws can almost be like a corner, and this time it leads to a corner. The fifth for SMU. Some tussling in the box, some pushing. Balls deep in the back post. Running out of real estate. Going as far as the Cal Women's Soccer Hall of Fame boards on the side. And speaking of Cal Women's Soccer Hall of Famers, we have to give a shout out to Alex Morgan, who hung up her cleats this past weekend. The Cal standout. All time, uh, third all time leading scorer for the Golden Bears with 45 goals. Um, for those of you who don't know, maybe our SMU folks who don't know some of the great alums that have come from the University of California, Berkeley, Alex Morgan is one of them and was actually coached by our current head coach, Neil McGuire. Uh, and she has had a storied career, uh, uh, accelerator of things related to diversity and inclusion and in sport and advocate for, particularly for women in sport. And so, shout out to Alex Morgan. Um, and her great career and the ins inspiration that she's brought to many of our players, including our leading goal scorer this year, Carly Lima, who has already eclipsed um, her highest goal scoring uh, of, of, of her career. I think she already has 11 goals this season. She's the leading goal scorer nationally in women's D1 soccer. So uh, for our SMU fans out there, you might want to learn some of those names as you get to know the Golden Bears and the rich history of athletics here. I mean double digits not even halfway through September is a ridiculous stat. I believe it was back-to-back -back braces and a hat-trick already for Carly Lima so it was plenty to be excited about for for the women's soccer program moving forward here this we is, go this is possible Ooh, strong tackle referee let them one play Definitely not a foul, but a very good challenge there from, from SMU. You did not want that ball to find Justin Knight in on the left side of the field. Wide open space, so well done by SMU to, to track back. It's dangerous. This is a good opportunity for SMU. Thinking... Well, Demon may have been better served to sort of let that one, to dummy that one, let that one make its way towards the penalty spot area. He was at the near post and effectively served as a defender on that one. It was not a lot of time to react for him. Um, and that one actually helped to play defense for the Golden Bears. Eleven minutes left here in the game, and I really think it could go either way at this point. Santiago Hopkins is looking to make his way back onto the pitch. Perhaps at the next break of play. I think that's something Cal has missed in the second half. Santiago Hopkins had a great 30 minutes in the first half. Not sure why trouble it's taking them this long to get him back in, but surely could, could make the difference here. If allowed to go back in, I'm not sure what's going on, what, what sort of issues are, are going on down down there. It seems to be like there is an issue to, to let him back in, so hopefully that they can make that happen. It looks like there's some frustration. Hopkins has got his hands on his hips, and the staff are asking questions. Ten minutes to go. Will this final outcome make false profits of us, Santiago, uh, Fernando? Uh, we, uh, we talked about a 2-1 possibility. I would say this. One goal really would feel like a backbreaker at this point in the match. Ten minutes to go doesn't leave a lot of time. Yeah, I, I can't really see more than a goal being scored at this point regardless of the side, but you never know what could happen with these nine minutes left in the game. I mean, the truth is we haven't really seen many clear-cut misses or like half chances that you think that should have been taken, right? I mean, 
throughout the course of the match, girls have seemed to be a bit hard to come by. Um, you know, uh, Zelizet's finish was a really great finish, and even that wasn't an easy goal. You, you probably missed that more than you score it, right? So uh, it'll be interesting to see what's created in the next 10 minutes and the ambition that's shown by both teams to perhaps sacrifice a little bit of defensive um, caution to go and try to get the game winner. Yeah. Looks like Hopkins will be able to get in back in the game, going in for, I believe, Isaiah Thomas. Yep. It's Thomas. This makes his way off. Hopkins looking to do something special. His family's here. But so is Djokovic, who has shown us that he throws the ball in such a way that it almost seems like a corner. Can Cal make something out of this? Hopkins is on, on the ball, and looking to play his teammate, Knighton. So Alfredo, Ortiz? Yeah, Alfredo Ortiz makes something out of it. You get the sense that whomever scores the next goal is going to be enthusiastically received and celebrated by that team's supporters and players. You, you get the sense, right? There's a, a building of momentum and sort of tension that needs to be resolved and released by a goal. Without a doubt. I mean, it, it'll most likely be the game winner if that does take place. So, so we'll see. We'll see what either side can make out of the remaining eight minutes at this point. Exasperations of hopes for a foul call. Ooh, that's a tough, tough touch. This is not the time to be relying on or expecting anything from referees or lines people. This is not the time to be um, huffing and puffing or, um, or getting distracted by anything than the focus of maximizing these last eight minutes. But rather, if that does take place, someone will be punished. So we'll see, we'll see what takes place. Here we go. Good Great turn. cut. Good work. This is trouble. This is dangerous. Brogger. Oh, that's an important save. That's an important save. Maybe a collision with the post. Hopkins falls down. That is not where you want a foul that is, at this point in the game. That is a free kick taker's joy. I mean, you never want to foul there, but I don't think you want to foul there at this stage in the game specifically. Bracken Sarah fell down. Clock has not been stopped. Yellow card given. Now the clock is stopped because of the booking. A yellow card given to Daniel Escorcia. Those at home who are counting, that's at least the fifth yellow card that has been given in the match. And for those who may be watching and wondering what is Justin Knights and doing on the ground. To number 21 of SNU, Daniel Felipe Escorcio. He is sacrificing his, his body, if you will, to um, protect the defense so that if the ball is rolled underneath the wall, who will likely jump when the ball is shot, that they can't uh, pass the ball underneath the wall. That's actually relatively new. When I was playing back in the day, 
I mean, you didn't lie on the ground and have the, the person protecting the wall on the ground, but this is a new strategy that um, is important these days. And this is uh, that for the shot, this danger, and it's a goal. Go, 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 go! Mustangs! From the time the ball left his foot, you knew that was big, big trouble. And big, big trouble, it is. Accident free kick. That was well taken. That's curling, the curling, curling. From number seven, Kieran Chambrine Pino. Pino with an amazing That's finish. Left footed curling shot. And his head coach told me before the match that he is underrated. But watch number seven. And number seven has fulfilled his coach's biggest hopes in the 83rd minute. I mean, a fantastic finish. Not much you can do there. Wall looked to be set up as well as it could be. Not, not much you can ask of, of Brocco either. I mean, fantastic finish. Uh, the game winner we were talking about for sure. The enthusiasm we were talking about as well as the heartbreak on the other side. There's still six minutes and some change to, to make something happen if you're California. But now you're looking to play for a tie rather than a win. And yeah, that's the challenge. That I mean that that let some of the air out of Edwards Stadium. You can um, you can you can sense the, the frustration from the the cow bench and the fans. But that was a free kick. Um, that from the time it left his foot, it was well struck. It was curling. Um, the location of the free kick was one that in you know, the wall. You, as a goalkeeper, you're not quite sure who's going to take it, which way it's going to curl. You can go either way because the, the free kick was somewhat central. And he bent that one like Beckham, left-footed, back of the onion bag, 2-1. Corsia Actually, making weight. Into the match, number 13, Richard Garcia. And also number 36, Noah Irvin. Richard Garcia and Noah Irvin back on the pitch. Daniel Scorsia, number 21, making way. Well, we may know a thing or two about soccer. We said 2-1, but perhaps there could be a 2-2 in the bag. There's still plenty of time left, still five and a half minutes, so you never know. The lead, the lead could get extended or, or there could be a tie. Looks like plenty of time wasting now is a strategy from SMU, and, and the referee took note of that. When you travel all the way from Dallas, a long road trip, long flight, um, nothing makes the trip back like going back with a win. Seems like flights seem shorter when you win, right? Yeah. Trips are better, flights are shorter. It's what you want to get out of it, but we'll see. Like, like I said, it's still, still some time left. A lot could happen in five minutes, so, so let's see. And I mean, these are the moments where the Golden Bears have to also show resolve, right? Um, you know, the, the the body language, the mentality has to be that we can we can we can still get one, right? If you're a Golden Bear, um, I'm thinking that's the mindset that you would expect, Fernando. Yeah, I you mean, you see, you, you see it, you see it for for anyone. You're if, whenever you're a competitor and you're trying to win, these are the moments you you live for, and not ideal to be playing for a tie at this moment, but. But definitely, you want to make the best out of this type of situation. And, you know, interesting things have happened. There have been two goals scored in four minutes, you know, especially when the clock stops here. 
So maybe if the Golden Bears can get one now, a win could still be possible. We want to keep all options open. We want our audience to stay with us. Don't turn off. Don't, don't, don't switch to another game. Stay with us on this ESPN Plus app. California struggled all game with the short free kicks. Cannot clear the first man an issue. That's been, that hasn't been able to be solved throughout this game. Different free kick takers, but, but the same result consistently. SMU at this point will do its best to run the clock to clear the ball, but Carmichael lifting that one into the box. Gordon Bears looking to find one more opportunity. Well, a long throw it may be for California here. Santiago Hopkins making his way over, but the ball was thrown in. It's a strong header. Well done. It. Can California make something out of this in the last 180 seconds of this game? Atimapua! What a wonderful take by the goalkeeper there. Martin Dominguez was high. Adimabua is tall, and he uh, stretched his sinews as, high, as long as he could. Uh, and, and for, for uh, Dominguez to sort of pluck that one out of the air like that, that was well taken. Dominguez is probably shorter than Adimabua, um, but rose high and used the fact that he could have, use his arms um, in good fashion there. I mean, the 5'11 goalkeeper definitely not as tall as the 6'5 forward, so... So great, great vertical there from, from the Mustang goalkeeper. It was like he just sort of plucked it up from over his head, right? It was good, good work there. Looks like there may be a substitution for California in the remaining two, two minutes and change. I must admit, I would have gotten a lot more playing time in my career if we could sub like you could sub in college soccer. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, th there's there's different rules for sure. In this, in in the you can come in and out first and and from the first half to the second half. But when I was playing, Fernando, you had three substitutions, and when you went off, you went off. That was as you say, that was Gates. That was it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even in the pros now, it gone up to to, to five. five. Yeah. So. Three stops and five subs, but definitely different rules here in, in college. Rohan Milligat has made his way onto the pitch. First time in the, of, of the game. He's a junior who scored some good goals for the Golden Bears in the past, and the Golden Bears will be hoping that he could get one in the last two minutes. Yes. That Knight. one worked out. Made his way to Knighton. Yeah, Rohan has historically been good for California. Had a, a very involved freshman season, and a sophomore season saw some starts, but... Only, only two minutes here in, in the end of the game for him today. We'll see what he can make of it. Santiago Hopkins making his way from the right side of the field to the left for this long throw. Kevin Carmichael in there. Adima Bua in there. We'll see what they can make of it. Clock has been stopped. What is going on? Looks like there's some communication amongst the referees. Not sure what's going on though. Video review, potential penalty check. No, I think it's an actual check for some type of um, interaction between the players. Maybe a check for some type of card. Here's a, a yellow card for the staff, the SMU staff. I mean, if it's video review, it must be Yellow card shown to the SMU bench. I think this is a review, I think, just based on the reactions that I heard for some type of interaction between 
players in the box. Good and Bears bench, Pence to be looking on. SMU staff seem frustrated by something that they think they saw. We'll be interested to see what, what actually took place. There is video review now, and so the referee will get a chance to see, and it will be interesting, interesting to see the result. In the 89th minute, the score is 2-1. SMU Mustangs are leading after an accident free kick. Uh, by uh, Kieran Pino curled in a left-footed effort that uh, beat the wall and goalkeeper Brugger all hands up. It was well taken, nothing much that anyone could do uh, besides applaud the effort. And that's the difference in the match. Uh, SMU took the lead through a penalty, somewhat controversial penalty for some, early in the match. Golden Bears equalized, through a really good finish by Malcolm Zelazit. And now in the 89th minute, there is a review taking place for some type of infraction potentially that could impact the outcome and opportunities in the last one minute and 22 seconds. Well, if, if the check is taking this long, I can't imagine it's not for some sort of penalty check. It's been way too long at this point if it's not for that. In the box, plenty of interaction, plenty of action. There's got to be something there. SMU, the SMU bench complaining. The Cal bench waiting apprehensively. We shall see. Time will tell. The suspense, I imagine, has our audience glued to their phones and their screens. Crowd is waiting. Here we go. What's the call going to be? Let's see. Referee says. She's seen something. All right. She's calling over. Red card. Nancho Adimabua. And issuing a straight red card. Well, told you, not surprising. We said it before the match that we'd be surprised if this match doesn't end with at least one red card just based on the turn and the early yellow cards. The ref has seen something, and a, a red card, straight red card, has been given to Nanso Adimabua, who makes his way to the sideline. Golden Bears are down to 10 men and down one goal with just over a minute to play. This will surely play, play a role in Monday's match as well. Not only 10 men left here in the, in the remaining 82 seconds of the game, but the also for minute, Monday. A red card shown to California number 10, Nanso Adimabua. Yeah, Adimabua will not be available on Monday against Dominican. Can California still make something out of this, though? Long throw by Hopkins. It's a shot. SMU will surely just run the clock at this point, and that should be the game. One minute, one minute remaining in the half. 55 seconds left and... A last free kick for California. Can they make something out of it? Marco Brocker stepping up, sending Carmichael up. One last opportunity here, it looks like, for the California Golden Bears. 30 seconds. Kick is up. Could Knights get on the end of it? 
Ten seconds to go. Ten, nine, That's the game. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And for good measure, consistent with the theme of the match, with one tick left, another yellow card has been issued. In the ninth minute, yellow card shown to SMU number 24, Chris Neiman. Two, one, zero. And that's the game. Final score here, 2-1. SMU defeats the California Golden Bears in a testy affair.